When you think you coached against him so many times, you know him well. What's your reaction to this decision, what he's meant to the game, what the game's lost? When I hear him say that I don't think right now I'm the right man for the job, now you think about Roy Williams. We all know him fairly well. He loves North Carolina. He is North Carolina. It's in his blood. And for him to say that, that moved me. I don't know about you guys, but that moved me because it's not the 900 wins. It's not the Hall of Fame. It's not the three national championships. It's what Marcus Page said. You see, every single guy that coaches wants that moment, that moment, because that's why Roy Williams got into coaching. He didn't co get into coaching to become head coach at North Carolina or win national championships or become Roy Williams. He got into coaching to impact and build a bridge for young people to cross. He got into coaching to change young people's lives. He was totally immersed in it. And to listen to Marcus Page, that's what his legacy is. It's not just Marcus Page. It's Tyler Hansborough. It's Michael Jordan. You can go through all the lists. As you watch on social media, all the players that have stepped up and said the same thing, Coach Williams changed my life. The lessons I learned from Coach Williams was so much bigger than basketball. They were about life. To me, his legacy has nothing to do with basketball. He used basketball as his vehicle to change young people's lives and build a bridge. And to me, I was better off for learning how to coach against him. I am honored that I could call him as a friend. A friend. Uh, basketball is going to miss him. The coaching profession is going to miss him because he really was a model for all of us to follow. Yeah, part of that legacy, too, is just the grace by which he handled people. Mm -hmm. I started at the company the 2009-2010 season. That was the season that they didn't make the NCAA tournament. They were in the NIT. I was assigned to the NIT. So I looked down and find out that I'm actually going to have to interview him before the game. And in my mind, I've been out of the college game since 92. I'm like, man, that's Roy Williams. I got to interview <laughs> this dude. So I'm sitting down with him, and I've always thought that I was cool under pressure. And I literally choked. And I'm talking about literally choked. I swallowed <laughs> a little bit of saliva, start coughing all over the place. And he reaches in his pocket, gives me a hauls, and says, it's going to be okay, son. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so his legacy is the grace by which he handled people. And I'll never never forget that. I mean, you're talking about one of the legends of our game, three national championships, and he's dealing with little pee on me who couldn't handle it at that time. <laughs> Anytime a legendary coach steps down, retires, whatever it is, uh, in the immediate aftermath, we talk about, you know, how many wins, how many championships, you know, how many ACC championships, whatever the league is, and, and go through a resume. In the long term, a lot of that stuff isn't what comes to mind first. Mm -hmm. What comes to mind first is a feeling. And for me, when I think of Roy Williams, I think of two things. I think of champion and class, mm -hmm. and both on and off the floor. He, he's always been a champion in the way he's coached his team, the way he has carried himself, the way he has competed, yeah. and he has always done it with the utmost class. And it doesn't matter win, lose, mm -hmm. whether he's happy, upset, he's a classy human being. And, uh, and I think he's been a credit to the profession mm -hmm. of coaching. Uh, and I don't think he's replaceable. Somebody else will have that job and they'll do very well. Yeah. M you know, maybe win championships, all that. There will never be another, another coach like Roy Williams at North Carolina or anywhere else. That's the impact he's had on the game. It's been a Mount Rushmore type mm. impact. How about how humble he is? I mean, right. to me, like, when you talk about his success and the success he's had, he always defers to Coach Smith. Always. I've never talked to him about the Carolina program, how they were playing, what they were doing. He would always give all the credit to Coach Smith, his mentor. Because remember now, when he became an assistant coach at North Carolina, he wasn't an assistant coach. He was selling calendars and driving all throughout the state of North Carolina because he left his teaching job to earn a living for all of $4,500. So, I mean, but his reverence for Coach Smith and what Coach Smith did for him and the lessons he learned from Coach Smith, he executed those lessons every single day. And those players were better off for it. Well, I, I tell you what I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss the pregame talks where he says, now you can't tell this story on the <laughs> And it leaves me laughing. Yes. And I'm not going to tell a story now because I told Roy I wouldn't, but let's just say that if you're mad about a practice or something, be careful about driving your 
car through puddles. <laughs> yeah, I was with I'm you. I was going to say. Dad, go, Maurice. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> no, sh- we're just saying, generally speaking. Uh, North Carolina, though, now as great a chapter in its history as this was with Roy Williams, he turned down the job once mm-hmm. and then came back and, and restored the glory. What's next for North Carolina? Where, where should they look to find the next coach? Might want to go over to Roy's house and knock on the door and say, want to come back? (laughs) Uh, North Carolina, Duke, uh, Indiana, a lot of these places that that have uh, what they call families oftentimes need to look within the family first. Mm -hmm. And there's a constituency at North Carolina that expects that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So if you are, there's not a no-brainer this time. Uh, and North Carolina was extraordinarily fortunate when Coach Smith stepped down that they had Bill Guthridge uh, and then when when they were looking for the next coach that Roy Williams was out there. Mo- most most teams don't have that in their stable of, of family. Mm-hmm. You just don't have that to have a, to have a, a Hall of Famer ready to ready to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean if you're going to look in the family there are two names that stand out at the very beginning and that's Hubert Davis mm-hmm. and Wes Miller. And those are, are two great options. I don't know what Bubba Cunningham's going to do. I know that, that, that he'll be consulting uh, everyone within the family yeah. to get input because you have to do that when you're making this type of decision. But, but who would envy the position of having to make that decision? That, that's an extraordinarily difficult decision to make. I, I think in North Carolina is the firm. I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, <laughs> and to me, they have their head coach, and he was sitting right next to Roy Williams for the last, whatever, seven or eight years. Nine, yeah. I mean, to me, Hubert Davis went back to North Carolina, left obviously a pretty comfortable situation because he loves that school. He coached a JV team for the last seven years. Mm-hmm. Why would Hubert Davis, with all the accolades and all the success he had, go and coach that JV team? I, my gut feeling is because he wanted some head coaching experience to run a practice, to organize a practice, to have a feeling of making those type of decisions. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.